before I start, <coughs> it should be clear that you shouldn't confuse this with the previous talk. The previous excellent talk was on the art of judging. This will be a computer scientist take on the art of juggling. So there are various titles for the talk, and in case you're having trouble, I'm Mike. Uh, if you want to distinguish between us, I'm Mike and this is Damien here. <coughs> I hope you don't mind him sitting in, but he's quite keen to learn what it's all about. Okay, so why did I come up with this title? Um, <coughs> that's because there's been a previous paper, a very famous one in AI by John Searle, called Minds, Brains and Programs. And I'm going to take the form of that paper, but not the content. Um, for the talk today, and hopefully it will um, provoke some thoughts. Okay, so I've added the term or the word bodies. And that's because we're, beginning, we're going to be talking about embodied general AI, in particular embodied general AI for robotics. So here's one of the other titles. The subtitle is Improvised Goal-Directed Behavior. We're going to look at the context before we get on to that subtitle. So the context is this background big picture here. And I think as many of everyone will know the term software and hardware. And there's a standard relation. If you push people harder as to what they think software is about, we can say that software is a program run by the computer hardware. And the key, the key word to remember here is program, because that's what we're going to do in a few minutes. We're going to just look at the nature of a program in a very simple, direct way. So, what is a program in AI? There's been a very recent example in the news, which many of you may have seen, which is that of DeepMind. Uh, DeepMind is an organization which has created the program AlphaGo. And for those that don't know board games, Go is a more <coughs> sophisticated game than chess, more challenging intellectually and so on, and it's taken us decades more to master chess, to, to master Go in AI, than to master chess. So we mastered chess in the last century, but AlphaGo has just recently beaten the, uh, one of the top players in Go. So that's an important AI milestone. But I want to draw attention to one thing, which is that the body in playing this board game plays a really insignificant role. It doesn't matter who moves the pieces on the board. The intelligence is in the mind, and the body is really kept separate. So, do we take from this that AI is about a gloriously designed AI program? Is that what all AI is about? Maybe somebody like Damien might disagree for reasons that I'm going to outline. So what happens when we give the body a more significant role to the sort of AI task that we're taking on? Well, here's the subtitle, which is Improvised Goal-Directed Behavior. So let's look at the terms here and see how they came about. So the the idea is to look at how AI machines, like robots, can improvise. We know that robots are normally directed by goals, that's no surprise. But the key thing for this talk will be the reference to improvisation. How do we make a robot improvise? Well, so <coughs> what we've got here is improvisation posing a challenge for embodiedness, and you'll see just how the body is giving us the big challenge here. Improvisation is also important in itself because we consider what we do during the day and we see a lot of improvisation going along. So if we walk amongst people, you're coming out of the theatre or coming into the theatre, this is a, an unregulated physical environment. People are trying to brush past us and so on. So how would a robot navigate this? The robot's going to require <laughs> richly varied and novel, unscripted responses. In other words, it's going to have to make improvised responses. Now, <clears throat> we improvise all the time if you think about it, and indeed it's very artificial if we think about not improvising. So I take you to the place um, where we don't improvise very much, 
in our regular day job, and that's if we're a call centre operator. If we're a call centre operator, there's something artificial about the way that we're behaving during the operation, which is that there is no, that there is a set script that we follow. Otherwise, in general everyday life, there is no set script. So for computing, the challenge is how to compute for improvisation, given that a program, which is the thing that we use, it's the standard software-hardware relation, is essentially a set script. Okay, so let's look a little bit further. It won't be too painful. Just to look a little bit further at why the program is a set script. Essentially, it's a list of instructions, processing inputs and producing outputs. So there's one up there now. There's an instruction. If input X, then output Y. If we run the program, we make it come alive, we activate it, it has an internal state. And that's simply the instruction that is currently operative. That's where we are in the script at the time. So, what is a digital computer in these terms? A digital computer is essentially a script enactor. It makes the script come alive. It takes inputs for the program script to act on and passes on outputs through the program script. Essentially very simple. And so, Another name for a digital computer is a finite state machine with the output and the next internal state instruction determined by the input and the current internal state instruction. It's a very, very simple operation. Okay, so I'd just like to finish this slide with one thought. If we really are saying that a set script is going to be inadequate for improvisation, then there may be implications for computing as well as AI because we're talking about the nature of a program, which is what all computer scientists at the moment work with. Okay, so where this is all leading to is to lead to a particular claim, which is it doesn't matter how much programming we put in, how many years of programming we put into a set script for a robot or an embodied agent, no amount of that programming will enable sustained, successful behavior in very common physical environments with perturbation which is novel. And I'll show you what I mean by novel perturbation in, in the next few slides. What I mean by novel perturbation is it's perturbation that can't feasibly be anticipated. If we could feasibly anticipate it, we could build that into our program. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now I'm going to show you some uh, illustrations. Okay, the, it's jumped ahead of it, doesn't matter. I'll show you the um, demo first and then I'll come back to the slides. So the first juggling illustrator I'm going to show you is where improvisation is not really much in evidence. Okay, so <clears throat> if I boot it up, this is a live running program, which is why I'm having to, to run it off the laptop. You can see here that these blocks are standing for hands, and they're juggling some balls. So we've got two balls coming out here, and it's doing quite well. We've got three balls, and it's doing quite well. And we just wait a few seconds longer. We should see four balls coming out. And then look what happens. We get the two clumping together and then another two clumping together. In other words, this particular program is a three ball juggler. The script is set and it is using perfect information. It's using perfect knowledge about where the balls will be. It's got all the perfect physics equations and so on. That is an example where the juggling is not improvised. <clears throat> okay, so if I quit that one and go back to the slides now. Okay, so we can go back to the slides. Some juggling illustrates embodied improvisation. The one that we just looked at does not. Both the demos that I'm showing you are the work of Chris Lamb, who is a senior honors student in our school, so he should take the credit for these. So the first is unperturbed juggling. There's not much perturbed juggling going on there at all. It will just carry on and on. 
And as I said, you make successful throw and catch cycles, perfect actions, perfect observations, perfect equations, perfect physics. All perfect. The second one, which I haven't reached yet, so if we can keep on the slides, that would be good, um, <coughs> is a different beastie altogether. So this is where we do have perturbed juggling. This is where we do have improvisation. So here, the juggler is made deliberately imperfect in the simulation. There's no perfect equations, there's no perfect observations. Um, there's only very crude perception and action. And it has one rule, which is the same as an amateur juggler, which is to keep the gap in time between the balls as even as possible. That's all it's given as information. Okay, so on the top right picture, you can see the unperturbed case, which is that blue circular circuit. That represents the cycle um, of the paddles, which is down there in the um, bottom left. And it's just there in a graph. So you can see that there's not much variation as we go round and round, as we have throw and catch, throw and catch. The one down here, on the uh, bottom right here, is different. It's got the blue cycles in it, but if you look carefully, it's also got some grey lines, and it's also got some red lines. It's going to be perturbed, because these balls are going to come out as they did for the previous demonstration, but this time it's going to try and do better, even though it's got more imperfect knowledge. Okay. So in this case, the perturbation can't be feasibly anticipated, and this leads to the second demonstration. So if I can have the second demonstration, please. Okay, it takes a few seconds to boot up. And you have to watch the timing of things quite carefully, or go to the graphs that I've just shown you for what actually happened. One ball comes out, two balls come out. Three balls come out. This is three ball juggling, and it's quite happy doing three ball juggling. Another couple of seconds and we'll get the fourth ball coming out. This is a live demo, so I don't really know what's going to happen, just to add to the tension. This is four, this is five. And you can see here that it's actually managing to do five balls. It will in fact make a mistake at some stage. This one's going really rather well. You can see it switched from three balls to four balls to five balls without requiring switching to a different script. Now it's clumped together. You've got the yellow and the green clumping together and it's doing four balls. It's adapted yet again. So it's a different thing to the first demo. So something different has gone on here. It does in fact fail quite easily, which is why I was a bit nervous about it, but it's done really quite well. We can switch back to the slides. Okay, so what's actually going off here? How does it actually do it? The system is actually using a script which is not a set script, it's continually changing. So it's not just changing on to the next instruction, it's actually changing itself. So we're now not working with a set program. The underlying mechanism is in fact an artificial neural network, which is where the brain comes in. And this is changing the system's finite state machine. It's changing the way that the states operate on the inputs and the outputs, it's changing the way that the paddles move according to just how successful the behavior is. So when the fourth and the fifth balls come out, it's suddenly finding itself having to adapt. And that's, behind the, that's what's behind the graph with all the colors in, the blue, the gray, and the red, because that's it adapting. The gray one is it going mad for a little bit, trying to adapt, trying to change its script. So there are no separate scripts for each number of balls juggled. It's not going from a three ball script to a four ball to a five ball. It's got one script which is continually changing. So the conclusion is, we've got a digital computer, a fancy term for this finite state machine, and we've done really rather well with that today as it's modeled and automated many processes. 
However, if we look in robotics and what's coming up in robotics for what's called general AI, how to make robots like Damien do things generally, walk around, dance, sing, whatever, all within the same body, we're studying how the mind interacts with the body. And that may force us to alter our notions of, first of all, what it is to compute, because we will no longer be relying on set scripts, but scripts that change themselves, and what it is to be us. Thank you.